Unit 7, going shopping. Becky and Tim Ross just got home from work. They're making plans for the evening. Listen to the conversations. What do you want to do tonight? Oh, nothing. I don't feel like going anywhere. Neither do I. Let's just stay home. I can make some spaghetti for dinner. Good idea. But we have to go shopping. We don't have any ground beef or tomato sauce. I'll go out. There's no coffee, bread, or butter either. Okay. I'll stay here and clean up the kitchen. All right. Uh, how much ground beef do we need? Oh, a pound. Yes, ma'am. What would you like? A pound of ground beef, please. All right. Anything else? No, thanks. Is this a pound of coffee? No, ma'am. It's a 10-ounce bag. How many ounces are in a pound? 12 or 16? I can never remember. 16. Would you like some help with those bags? No, that's okay. I can manage. Are you sure? They really look heavy. Well, all right. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Hi, I'm home. Boy, that took a long time. There was a long line at the grocery store. Could you go out to the car? There's another bag in the back seat. Okay. Now, listen to the conversations again and repeat each line. What do you want to do tonight? Oh, nothing. I don't feel like going anywhere. Neither do I. Let's just stay home. I can make some spaghetti for dinner. Good idea. But we have to go shopping. We don't have any ground beef or tomato sauce. I'll go out. There's no coffee, bread, or butter either. Okay. I'll stay here and clean up the kitchen. All right. Uh, how much ground beef do we need? Oh, a pound. Yes, ma'am. What would you like? A pound of ground beef, please. All right. Anything else? No, thanks. Is this a pound of coffee? No, ma'am. It's a 10-ounce bag. How many ounces are in a pound? 12 or 16. I can never remember. 16. Would you like some help with those bags? No, that's okay. I can manage. Are you sure? They really look heavy. Well, all right. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Hi, I'm home. Boy, that took a long time. There was a long line at the grocery store. Could you go out to the car? There's another bag in the back seat. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, anywhere you are, all over the world. Do you like going shopping? Going shopping can be fun for some and can be boring or tiring for some others. 
Do you find it easy or difficult? Well, it has to be done one way or another. Someone must do it. Today, Becky and Tim Ross, a young married couple, have just got home from work and are making plans for the evening. It is becoming increasingly common for both husband and wife to work outside the home in the United States. This often means that husband and wife share the household chores. In most suburban areas, it is necessary to own an automobile since shopping centers may be located some distance from the home. Now let's talk about some words and expressions that we have in this lesson. Uh, Becky uses the expression I don't feel like to mean I don't want to. Tim expresses agreement with Becky's statement using neither do I which is equivalent to I don't either. At the grocery store, Becky initially refuses an offer of assistance by saying, I can manage, and then accepts the offer and expresses her appreciation by saying, that's very nice of you. Uh, we also have the word ground beef, uh, which is beef cut up into very small pieces, often used to make hamburgers. And of course we know beef is the meat from a cow, a cow's meat, of course. Now according to our tradition, we listen once more to these introductory conversations for the better understanding and for the better digestion of the whole lesson. Unit 7. Going shopping. Becky and Tim Ross just got home from work. They're making plans for the evening. Listen to the conversations. What do you want to do tonight? Oh, nothing. I don't feel like going anywhere. Neither do I. Let's just stay home. I can make some spaghetti for dinner. Good idea. But we have to go shopping. We don't have any ground beef or tomato sauce. I'll go out. There's no coffee, bread, or butter, either. Okay. I'll stay here and clean up the kitchen. All right. Uh, how much ground beef do we need? Oh, a pound. Yes, ma'am. What would you like? A pound of ground beef, please. All right. Anything else? No, thanks. Is this a pound of coffee? No, ma'am. It's a ten-ounce bag. How many ounces are in a pound? Twelve or sixteen? I can never remember. Sixteen. Would you like some help with those bags? No, that's okay. I can manage. Are you sure? They really look heavy. Well, all right. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Hi, I'm home. Boy, that took a long time. There was a long line at the grocery store. Could you go out to the car? There's another bag in the back seat. Okay. Now, listen to the conversations again and repeat each line. What do you want to do tonight? Oh, nothing. I don't feel like going anywhere. Neither do I. Let's just stay home. I can make some spaghetti for dinner. Good idea. But we have to go shopping. We don't have any ground beef or tomato sauce. I'll go out. There's no coffee, bread, or butter either. Okay. I'll stay here and clean up the kitchen. All right. Uh, how much ground beef do we need? Oh, a pound. 
Yes, ma'am. What would you like? A pound of ground beef, please. All right. Anything else? No, thanks. Is this a pound of coffee? No, ma'am. It's a ten-ounce bag. How many ounces are in a pound? Twelve or sixteen. I can never remember. Sixteen. Would you like some help with those bags? No, that's okay. I can manage. Are you sure? They really look heavy. Well, all right. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Hi, I'm home. Boy, that took a long time. There was a long line at the grocery store. Could you go out to the car? There's another bag in the back seat. Okay. Wow, that was great. Good job. Good work. Figure it out. Choose A or B. Two answers for each question. Only one of them is correct. Number one, the example. What do you want to do tonight? Two answers. Good idea. Or, oh nothing, I don't feel like going anywhere. Of course part B is correct, because this is the answer to the question, of course. But uh, part A is irrelevant, is not the answer. Because the question says, what do you want to do tonight? Uh, we should talk about a plan to do something. But it says, good idea which is not a plan. It's not an explanation about any planning or any activity, which doesn't make sense at all. Number two, how much ground beef do we need? Part A, a pound. Part B, we don't have any tomato sauce. What do you think? Yeah, part A is correct, which is an explanation about the amount of beef needed. Uh, part B doesn't explain anything about the question, doesn't answer the question. So part A is correct. Number three, what would you like? Part A, all right, anything else? Part B, a pound of ground beef, please. What is your idea? What is your suggestion? Yeah, part B is correct, of course. What would you like? A pound of ground beef, please. Number four. How many ounces are in a pound? Two answers. A, 16. B, it's a 10-ounce bag. What do you think? A is correct, 16. Number five. Do you need any help with those bags? Part A, are you sure? Part B, no, that's okay, I can manage. What do you say? That's right, part B. Do you need any help with those bags? No, that's okay, I can manage. Part two, find the line in the dialogue that says, one, Tim doesn't feel like going out either, Neither do I, or let's just stay home, are the ideas we can find in the conversations, yeah, which correspond to the line mentioned already on the left side. Number two, Becky wants to stay home and have spaghetti for dinner. What word corresponds to this? sentence 
in the conversation? Yeah, we can say, good idea. All right. Number three. Becky will go shopping. What do you think? Yeah, in the conversation, we can find Becky saying, I'll go out. I'll go out is the answer. Number four. Becky doesn't want help with the bags. What can we find in the lesson? Yeah, she says, no, that's okay, I can manage. This is the answer. Number five. Becky appreciates the woman's help. What can we find about this? Yeah, she says, thank you, that's very nice of you. Do you forget things too? Well, personally I did a lot of times. So I do. Sometimes I forget things which I regret about. Here Bobby and Eva are checking the mail. Eva finds that the bills she made for her mother the day before have returned because she forgot to put stamps on them. Stamps can be purchased in rolls, sheets, books, or individually at the post office. Although special services such as parcel post, special delivery, and registered or express mail must be handled at the post office, stamps can usually be purchased in special vending machines in stores. In this conversation, Eva uses the expression don't make fun of me, meaning don't laugh at me or don't tease me. Eva gives Bobby examples of mistakes he has made using the phrase like the time. To flood means to fill with water. Unless I mail is equivalent to if I don't mail. Garden stamps is short for have you got any stamps. Other receptive words and expressions from the dialogue include mailed, sent them back, I can't believe it, forgot, downstairs, forget what I said, or can you buy a book? Now let's take a listen to the conversation between this brother and sister. You forget things too. Eva and Bobby are just getting home from school. One, comprehension dialogue. Listen to the conversation. What's all this? I mailed these bills for mom yesterday and the post office sent them back. Look, I can't believe it. You forgot to put stamps on them. Don't make fun of me. You forget things too. Like the time you left the water running in the bathtub and flooded the apartment downstairs. And the time... Okay, okay. Forget what I said. All right. Anyway, I'm worried about these bills. They're going to be late unless I mail them right away. Got any stamps? No, I'll have to get some at the post office. I'll do it. I have to go by the post office anyway. Great. Thanks a lot. Uh, how many stamps do you need? Could you buy a book? Here, I'll give you the money. How much does a book cost? Five dollars, I think. Here. Okay, see you later. Bobby, wait. You forgot to take the bills with you. No, I didn't. You forgot to give them to me. Now let's see how much we got it, or what. Figure it out. Say right, wrong, or I don't know. Number one, the example. Eva mailed the bills last week. It says wrong, uh, but how can we find the support for this answer? Yeah, 
it is wrong because uh, Eva says I mailed these bills for mom yesterday so it was yesterday not last week number two Bobby forgot to put stamps on the envelopes what do you think it is wrong because Eva forgot to put stamps on the envelopes three Bobby made fun of Eva what is your opinion yeah the answer is right because Eva says don't make fun of me so he made fun of her number four Eva doesn't want the bills to be late what is your idea the answer is right because Eva says I'm worried about these bills they're gonna be late unless I mail them right away number five Bobby is going to buy a book of stamps for Eva what do you think the answer is right because Eva says could you buy a book and Bobby says in the end okay see you later number six he'll mail the bills before going to the post office what do you think Yeah, it is wrong of course because first he has to go to the post office then uh, he can mail the bills three listen in Bobby sees a woman at the post office who is having difficulty carrying a package read the conversation below Then, listen to the conversation and fill in the missing words. Can I help you with that package? Thanks, but I can manage. Are you sure? Well, it is heavy. Okay. Phew. It must weigh over 40 pounds. It weighs 45 pounds. Now, listen to the conversation again and fill in the missing words. Can I help you with that package? Thanks, but I can manage. Are you sure? Well, it is heavy. Okay. Phew! It must weigh over 40 pounds. It weighs 45 pounds. 4. Say it right. Practice this conversation. First, listen to the conversation. Could you get some stamps? Sure. Anything else? Yes. Some coffee, bread, and milk. Okay. And some eggs butter and cheese now listen to the conversation again and repeat each line could you get some stamps sure anything else yes some coffee bread and milk okay and some eggs butter and cheese Now another practical exercise that we have. Your turn. The customer above is buying some stamps. Act out the conversation between the customer and the clerk. So there are two people, as you can see. On the left side, clerk. On the right side, customer. Let's read the information first. Clerk. Offer to help customer and then answer her questions. You will need this information. The post office sells books of 25 cent stamps. There are 20 stamps 
in a book. Stamps for letters are 25 cents each. Stamps for postcards are 20 cents each. Now, about the customer. You want to send 10 letters and 5 postcards. You need to find how much it costs to send a letter, send a postcard. You also want to know how many stamps are in a book, how much a book of stamps costs. You have four dollars, decide what to buy and then buy it. Alright, so it's a practical uh, exercise. You can practice in pairs. Uh, it's something that uh, cannot be recorded only by me. You should do it in action, alright? If you have questions or problems, something is not clear to you, you can ask your questions in the comment section and I'll provide the answer as soon as I see it. Our first grammar point. How much? How many? These two question words are used to ask questions about the amount of something or the number of things. Look at the examples that we have. How much flour do we need? Four cups. How much butter do we need? A pound. How many lemons do we need? One. How many eggs do we need? Eight. As you can see, flour and butter are not countable, right? So how much is used for them? But lemons and eggs can be counted. They are countable nouns. That's why we use how many with them, right? Clear? I hope so. Now exercise one says, ask questions about what you need to make a pound cake. Another student will answer your questions using the information in the recipe. So on the right side, we have the recipe, which is the cooking instruction. We have one example. How much flour do we need? Four cups. Based on the recipe, based on the cooking instruction that we have on the right side. Now the next point. There is and there are. There plus B. One form of B. Am is are. When we want to talk about the existence of something or some things or the existence of someone or some people, more than one person, we use these two uh, words. So. We have an example in the frame. There is no window in the bedroom. There isn't any furniture in the bedroom. So window is one, yeah, singular. So we use is and the contraction of is, which is apostrophe s, right? Instead of there is no window, we are saying there's no window. Then the next sentence is negative. So, there isn't any furniture in the bedroom. So, in negative form, we use any, right? And we add not directly to is. Then, there are no windows in the bedroom. Here we have plural, more than one window, right? So, we use are. And no makes it negative for us, right? Or there aren't any windows in the bedroom. They are both the same, right? Whether we say there are no windows in the bedroom or there aren't any windows in the bedroom, they are the same and the meaning is the same. The next uh, frame. There is a window in the bedroom. There is some furniture in the bedroom. So. Window is countable, so we use is for that, but furniture is not countable, 
right? So again, we use is for that, for both of them. There are some windows in the bedroom. Some, as you remember, maybe, uh, we spoke about it previously, can be used for both countable and uncountable nouns. So that's why here we have some windows. So, in general, there is and there are, are used to talk about the existence of something or some things, or the existence of someone or some people somewhere. In general, we use uh, there is and there are for this purpose. Now the exercise that we have says, you want to rent a furnished apartment? You find one that is only partly furnished and aren't sure you like it. Tell a friend why using the information on the right. We have an example. There's a bed. There is no dresser. And as I said before, no makes the sentence negative by itself. Whether we use no or not, both are the same. So let's think about uh, this exercise and let's try to answer it in order to make sure we understand the point very well. Now our next point. Indefinite compounds or indefinite pronouns uh, like someone, something, anyone, anything, somewhere, anywhere. We call them indefinite because they're not clear, right? Uh, it doesn't explain exactly who or what we talk about. Yeah? So they are called indefinite pronouns too. Well, let's see what the examples are. Uh, I hear someone outside. What does it mean? It means we hear a voice, we understand there is a person, there is a human being, but who is that? We don't know. That's why we use someone, because we don't know the name or the identity of that person. Or, I hear something outside. Here, we hear the sound of an object, not a human, right? But we don't know what it is exactly. Now the negative form on the right side. I don't see anyone or I don't see anything, right? So in negative form, someone and something turn into anyone and anything, right? Then we have no one is outside, nothing is wrong. No one makes the sentence negative by itself and it's about a person, yeah, which means not anyone not any person. Nothing means not any object or not anything. So, nothing is wrong means everything is alright. Now, let's go to the left side affirmative statement. He lives somewhere near here. Somewhere is about a location, a place. But where exactly? We don't know. We don't know the address and we don't know the exact location. That's why we use somewhere. Then negative form. He doesn't live anywhere near here. So anywhere is the negative form of somewhere, right? It's also about location or a place. Then we have yes, no questions. Do you hear anyone? Or do you hear anything? Any one or anything are used in question form and negative forms. Then the answer, negative short answer. No, no one or no, nothing. No one means not anyone and nothing means not anything. As simple as that. Then uh, another question, does he live anywhere near here? So, it's a question form, and any is used, as we know, in the question form too. So, anywhere, any place. The answer, no, nowhere near here. Negative answer, right? 
Nowhere means not anywhere. Not anywhere near here. So all of these are indefinite. They are unclear. Right? We don't know the exact information about all these people, all these objects or things, or about all these locations. Just because they are not clear to us, we use indefinite compounds or indefinite pronouns such as these. Now, exercise 3 says, fill in the blanks with the correct indefinite pronoun. We have one example. Number 1. Is anyone helping you? In the blank, we put anyone. Why? Because it's a question form, right? The answer, no, not yet. Then we have some other, uh, you know, uh, exercises. Let's try to answer them. Let's go to number two to see what we can say. Where's the men's room? I don't see one. Then we have a blank. What do you think we should say here in the blank? Where's the men's room? I don't see one anywhere, right? Because it's about a place, men's room. Then. The other person says, I don't either. Maybe we can ask blank. What can we say in the blank? What do you think? It's about asking. Of course, when we ask, we ask people. We don't ask any object or anything else. So because of this, we must put someone. I don't either. Maybe we can ask someone or somebody. Somebody is the same also with the same meaning. The only difference between someone and somebody is that uh, someone is more formal and is used in writings, but somebody is informal and can be used in speaking. Okay, now let's think about the rest of the exercises. Now our reading comprehension text with a comprehension check in the form of exercises. Lesson 42. A Taste for Charity. Here is an article about a famous American, Paul Newman. Listen as you read the article. Name. Paul Newman. Place of birth. Cleveland, Ohio. Most famous films. Cool Hand Luke, 1967. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, 1969. The Sting, 1973. The Color of Money, 1986. Won the Academy Award for Best Actor, 1987. Interests. Cooking, writing poetry, and painting. Dislikes. When people think of him more for his blue eyes and good looks than for his talent. When he has to talk about himself and answer the same questions over and over. Childhood Memories. Summer camp, the simple life, being close to nature and friends. Comments. I've admired and appreciated the guy since I was 12 years old and in a movie theater. Martin Scorsese, director. He's got a great sense of humor. Tom Cruise, co-star of The Color of Money. I think that in life we need to be a little like the farmer who fits back into the soil what he takes out. Newman. Paul Newman has had a long career as a famous movie star. He's played a leading man for 30 years, acting in over 45 films, and won an Oscar for Best Actor in 1987. He has been married to the actress Joanne Woodward since 1958, and has appeared together with her in films as well as directed her. But there are many sides to Newman. He enjoys having a little risk in his life, and is known for being a champion race car driver. He has always liked to cook, and when friends loved his Christmas presents of homemade salad dressing, Newman decided to go into business. Begun in 1982, Newman's own took off and became a success. Soon spaghetti sauce, popcorn, and lemonade were added, all carrying the familiar drawing of Newman's smiling face on their labels. Even Burger King restaurants served the salad dressings. Paul Newman believes in helping other people. All the profits from his success for food business are donated to charity. A charity close to his heart is the Hole in the Wall Gang Camp for Children with Cancer and Other Serious Diseases, which he began in 1988. 
This is a place where children can get away from the hospital atmosphere for two weeks and pretend they are living in the Wild West during the time of the American cowboy. Our comprehension check now. Number one. Read the article, then scan it and find the words for A. For occupations B. For things to eat or drink C. A holiday Number two. Look at the article again and find this information. A. The things Paul Newman likes to do in his free time. B. The year Paul Newman won an Academy Award. C. Newman's wife's name and occupation. D. The name of Paul Newman's camp for sick children. 3. Are there any important charities in your country? Do people in your country give money and time to charities? So these are the topics to think about. Another reading comprehension text in a different form. On your own. This advertisement for Crispo cooking oil was in the Sunday Star. Read the advertisement and then choose A, B or C. Crispo for all your family's frying. 1. Hey, it's Dad's night to make dinner. I love it when he cooks. Me too. What are we going to eat, Dad? Chicken fried in crispo oil. It's light, so I can fry all this chicken with just a few tablespoons of crispo. Hey, that's great! Two. Hi, Mom. Welcome home, honey. How was your class tonight? Great. I'm really learning how to work that computer. Oh, honey. The dinner looks wonderful. 3. This chicken is so light. How did you make it? With Crispo. Fried food comes out delicious every time in Crispo. 4. Crispo is lighter and has fewer calories. For all your family's frying, use Crispo, the family cooking oil. Now, choose A, B, or C. 1. This advertisement is selling A. Fried chicken B. Night schools C. Cooking oil Of course, it's part C because uh, it was all about this kind of cooking oil. Number 2. A. The children are B. The father is C. The mother is making dinner. Which one is correct? Of course, B. The father is making dinner. Number three. The mother, A. Had a class tonight. B. Worked late. C. Fried the chicken. Which one is correct? Yeah, that's right. Had a class tonight, yeah. Because she talked about learning the computer, right. And uh, of course the husband said, how was your class tonight? Yeah. Uh, number four. The children, A, like, B, don't like, C, aren't sure they like, their father's cooking. What do you think? Right. Part A. The children like their father's cooking. Yeah? Because the son says, Hey, it's dad's night to make dinner. I love it when he cooks. Alright. The next one. The father, A. Always fries chicken for dinner. B. Makes dinner when his wife has a class at night. C. Makes dinner 
when the children ask him to. What do you think? Yeah, part B makes dinner when his wife has a class at night. Number six. Crispo is not A. Light B. Heavy C. For the family. What do you think? Yes, Crispo is not heavy because it is light as the advertisement says. Unit 7. Exercise 1. Complete the conversations you hear. Choose A, B, or C. John and Nancy are planning their evening. 1. What do you want to do tonight? Oh, nothing. I don't feel like doing anything. Two. What would you like for dinner? Oh, just some sandwiches. Okay. Oh, no, we don't have any bread. Three. I'm leaving now. Bye. Oh, Nancy, wait. Could you get some eggs, too? Four. Yes, miss, may I help you? A loaf of whole wheat bread, please. Anything else? Five. Would you like some help with those bags? No, thanks. I'm okay. Are you sure? Listen, I'll take one bag, you take the other. Six. Hi, I'm back. That took a long time. Where were you? Exercise 2. Listen to the conversation. Check the items that are on the grocery list. Pete and Janice are having some friends over for dinner, and they're making up a list of what they need. We have to go shopping. I'll go out. But what should I get? Well, let's see. We're going to have spaghetti and a salad. Of course we need a box of spaghetti. We've got tomato sauce. What about green peppers and onions for the sauce? Well, we need two or three onions, but we have enough green peppers. Do you need anything for the salad? Just lettuce and some cucumbers. Anything else? How about a loaf of Italian bread? Fine. Write down a pound of butter, too. Is that all? Wait, don't forget to buy some ketchup. We need a bottle. Exercise 6. Listen to each sentence and mark the intonation. When the speaker's voice goes up at the end of the sentence, mark A. When it goes down, mark B. One. Could you bring a menu? Two. Are you eating dinner or having dessert? Three. Having dessert. Four. Well, there's ice cream, cake, and pudding. Five. Anything else? Six. We have lemon, chocolate, and apple pie. Seven. Is the apple pie served hot or cold? Eight. It's served cold. Exercise three. Label the pictures. Use the words in the box. Bag. Bottle. Can, dozen, head, loaf, quart, pound. So, number one, a bag of potatoes. Number two, what is it? Milk, a quart of milk. Number three, what is that? What word in the box is good 
for number three. Cheese, right? A pound of cheese. Number four. A head of lettuce. Number five. Two loaves of Italian bread. Number six. A dozen apples. Number seven. A bottle of ketchup. Number eight, a can of tuna. Exercise four. Choose A or B. Then write the questions and answers. Number one. How many onions do we have? A. We need a dozen. B. About a dozen. B is correct because uh, the question is about having, not needing. How many onions do we have? But part A says we need a dozen. The question doesn't ask about needing, right? Number two. What would you like? A. A quarter pound of turkey, please. B. I like turkey. What do you think? What is your idea? A is correct, right? What would you like means what do you want to have now? But part B says I like Turkey. This is a general uh, feeling and emotion or idea. But the question is not about that. The question is about what do you want right now at the shop. Okay? So A is correct. Three. Would you like some help with that box? A. That's okay, I can manage. B. Sorry, I can't right now. What do you think? A is correct. That's okay. I can manage. Number four. How many ounces are in a pound? A. 12. B. 16. What do you say? B. That's right. 16. Five. What do you want to do? A. I don't feel like doing anything. B. Good idea. Which one? A. Right. I don't feel like doing anything. Means I'm not in the mood of doing anything. Number six. How much orange juice do we need? A. A pound. B. A gallon. Of course, it's about liquid, so a gallon is correct. The question is about liquid. Exercise 5. Read the postal information chart, then answer the questions. Alex Wong works in a mailroom of an advertising company in New York City. He has to decide how much postage to put on each letter and package. So we have some information in the chart. We take a look at the information closely all the information and after that we answer the questions all right so think about it when you are ready we uh, do it together number one how much does it cost to send a three ounce letter to california 54 cents as you can see number two how much does it cost to send a half ounce letter to Spain. What do you think? 40 cents. That's right. Number three. How much does it cost to send a half ounce letter to Central America? 35 cents. That's right. Number four. How much does it cost to send a four pound package to the Middle East? Yeah, the answer is one ninety-three, one dollar ninety-three cents. Number five. How much does it cost to send a one-ounce letter to Florida from New York? What is your answer? Twenty cents. Very good. That's right. Number six. How many one-ounce letters can you mail? to Seattle from Chicago for 60 cents. 
How many? Three. Okay, good. Number seven. How much does it cost to send a one pound package to the Far East? What is your idea? 83 cents. Okay. Exercise 7. Act out the conversation. Take the part of the customer or the grocer. A customer is deciding what to buy at Shopway Grocery Delicatessen Counter. So here we have some information for both, right? One person plays the role of the customer. The other person plays the role of a grocer, right? So it's a pair practice. It's something practical should be done between two people or more. And it's not possible to do it in the recorded uh, version of class, right? So it's yours. It's on your own. Exercise 8. Complete the conversations using these indefinite pronouns. Someone, anyone, no one, something, anything, nothing, somewhere, anywhere, or nowhere. Nancy wants to use this stamp machine at the post office. So, Nancy says, does anyone have change for a dollar? The woman says, I have some quarters here. Then we have a blank. What can we say? Somewhere, that's right. Some quarters here, somewhere. Oh, here they are. Nancy says, thanks. Hmm, something is wrong with this machine. Excuse me, could someone take a look at this stamp machine? Or could somebody take a look at this stamp machine? The employee says, I'm sorry, no one here can fix it. Or Nobody here can fix it. Nancy says, well, is there another stamp machine somewhere around here? I don't have time to wait in line. Then the employee says, no, I don't believe so. The woman says, wait a minute. There's nothing wrong with the machine. There aren't any stamps in it. Exercise 9. Write questions with how much and how many using the list of words below. Then answer them using the chart. Nancy has to order supplies for her office and she has made a list of supplies the office is out of. Another secretary is telling her the amount to order. Right. So here on the note we have things to order, paper, pens, ink, paper clips, tape, and pencils. Now first we take a look at the chart, the items, mm. and the amount or the number of those items needed. The office needs 20 pads of paper, four boxes of pens, three bottles of ink, eight boxes of paper clips, ten rolls of tape, three dozen pencils. Now, number one, how much paper do we need? 25 pads, based on the information we have here. Number two, how many pens do we need? four boxes based on the information that we have. Number three. It's about the next item, ink. What can we say? How much ink do we need? The answer is three bottles. 
The next item on the list is paper clips. What question can we ask? With how many or how much, which one is correct? Paper clips are countable, so how many paper clips do we need? The answer is eight boxes. The next item on the list is tape. What can we say? What can we ask? How much tape do we need? Ten rolls. The reason why we use the word how much is because the word is tape. Tape by itself is not countable. It's a mass noun. But if we ask questions about the rolls of tapes, then we can ask the question with how many. We can say how many rolls of tapes. But we don't have rolls here. We want to ask only with the word tape. And it is not countable. Therefore, we say how much tape do we need? Ten rolls. Number six. Uh, the last uh, name, item on the list, pencils. What can we ask here? How many pencils do we need? And the answer is three dozen. All right, very good. Exercise 10. Read the note. Then write your own note, asking someone to pick up some things for you. One evening, Judy takes her daughter to the doctor after work, and her husband, Ted, finds this note. Ted, I'm at the doctor's with Jenny. She hurt her shoulder at school. Could you get these things for breakfast tomorrow at Ferndale Grocery? A dozen eggs, a pound of Swiss cheese, two quarts of milk, a can of Folgers coffee. Oh, I almost forgot. We are out of bread too. French bread is Jenny's favorite. Why don't you get a loaf of that? Thanks a lot. Judy. All right, now it's our turn. Yeah? It says, write your own note asking someone to pick up some things for you. You may need to cook something for dinner, for lunch, or you may need something for breakfast or for anything, or you may need something for the party. You are having a party and you need uh, to buy a lot of things, right? So you are free to write what you need. You can ask your friend, you can ask your brother, your sister, your roommate, your classmate, anyone, all right? So don't forget, writing is also very important. Okay, good work. Thank you for your company and thank you for your good work. Until next time that we meet again, I wish you a very nice time. Goodbye.